podcast is brought to you by Aldis International, supplying your expert AI and digital transformation staffing needs across the US and Europe. Today, you are listening to our AI in Action series, where leading minds in AI from across the world share their story, success, and advice. AI in Action cuts through the hype and explores the true impact of artificial intelligence in our world today. You're listening to AI in Action. I'm your host, JP Valentine. Our guest today is Peter Foley. Peter is the head of data science at EDO. Peter, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to chat. Yeah, and we're, we're excited to have you here. So Peter, let's start with yourself, please. Could you give us a bit of an overview of your background in technology and where you got started, some of the roles you've held along the way, and take us up to today as the head of data science for EDO? Sure. I came into data science from academia, as many of us did, though my background was in political science, doing methods development and analysis of political behavior, which turned into some consulting work back in 2011 and going into 2012. That led me to start a consulting firm doing political modeling and targeting with my grad school advisor. And through a collection of acquisitions and pivots that grew and grew and grew and turned into marketing, consulting, and then television data analysis, eventually turning into the like analytics and data science portion of another television company called 605. And then after leaving 605, I consulted independently for a little while and then got connected with the folks at EDO and decided to join in to lead up the data science and modeling team here. Nice. Well, thank you for the background. Um, tell us all about EDO, who you are as a business, what the mission of the organization is, and then what drew you to the company? Sure. So EDO as, as a company, our focus is on measuring the effectiveness of television ads. And so television in that context can include traditional cable and broadcast television, but it also covers a streaming services, on-demand viewing, the whole variety of ways that, that people can see, watch TV shows, watch movies, consume video content, and be exposed to ads. And for our, our customers, we help them identify which of the ads are actually changing people's behavior, which are influencing people to either visit a website, search for a brand or product that was featured in the ad, and measure that information both for the advertisers themselves and for their competitors. So for most of our products, the customers, when we're working with an advertiser, they can see both how their ads performed, where their ads performed well, and also see what their competitors are doing, where their competitors are placing ads, where their competitors' ads are having the biggest impact, and identify either strategies that they can replicate, areas that they could better compete against those competitors, all sorts of things that they want to know about how their ads are performing in the broader ecosystem of television ads. Quite an interesting space, this. Um, my first follow-up question to that is, how do you do what you do? Talk to us about the AI and data science at play here. Absolutely. We've got a couple of very interesting data sources, some of which we produce ourselves and really collect on our own, and then a lot of other data that comes from partners. Um, for the, our internal data sets, we actually have recording in a number of locations around the country where we detect all of the ads that air across a variety of different networks and do our own internal video processing, ad detection, ad tagging to get a very accurate measure of which ads are aired on which television networks. And so that's focusing on traditional broadcast and cable TV, primarily national ads. But what we get out of that is an extremely accurate down to the second or down to the minute record of which ad, ads aired when. And for some of our products, we line that, that log up with completely aggregated online activity. So searches for brands or products that are included in the ad. And by looking at a minute by minute level, you can actually see in the few minutes after the ad airs, a little spike 
in search traffic for the brands or product. And that's that, that, that size of that spike and the area under that spike becomes one of the primary raw metrics that we use to analyze the effectiveness of an ad. There's obviously a lot of other processing that has to go into that to make one ad airing comparable to another. ESPN is different from HGTV, is different from NBC broadcast, primetime is different from overnight. A lot of adjustments have to take place, but that's one of the main sources of information. A lot of what you've described there um, flows directly through your role and your team within data science. Can you describe the day-to-day of the data science group from the, first of all, from the overall size, the various positions that exist, and what it's like to be part of the team there working on the project? Yeah, we've got a a medium size data team, I would say. For the size of the organization, we're almost exactly 100 people in EDO as a whole, and we have seven of us on the data science team. So as a portion of the organization, a pretty big fraction, but still seven isn't a whole lot of people. Within that seven, we have three main groups of people. We have machine learning engineers who are on the most machine facing side. They're building up modeling pipelines, the integrating with data engineering teams and the downstream front end, the front end management teams, creating a lot of the systems and the pipelines and reliable uh, processes for moving data through our modeling and through our analyses. We have data scientists who are in the middle kind of of the team doing predictive modeling, build, putting together building blocks that are then going to be embedded in the larger systems, feature engineering, exploratory analysis. And then on the most people facing side, we have data analysts who are doing ad hoc studies of specific problems, monitoring internal data flows of the data processing flows within the company, doing internal dashboards, and then also providing tooling and support for the client-facing team of media analysts, or what we call them, the client-facing consulting layer that helps clients figure out how to use our data, how to take advantage of the information to guide their strategy. And we on the data science team create the tooling that they use. You are listening to the Aldis Podcast. When you're looking to scale your team, or if you are interested in showcasing your company in a future episode, reach out today. Or if you're in the market for a new role, visit our website to view open positions, www.aldis.com. So Peter, I, wa- I wanna talk a little bit about some of the projects that, that you're particularly excited about for not just yourself, but the overall data team. We were speaking off air about some of the cool stuff you're doing. When you look at the project roadmap for EDO, what are you looking forward to most? What are you excited about? The the biggest new initiative that we're working on is to bring together a variety of different data sources into an integrated system for analyzing the effectiveness of television ads. We have a, a collection of partnerships with data providers that are either giving individual level or household level records of ad exposures or website visits or searches. We have some data partners who provide us like small aggregated data or geographic aggregates of either the exposures or the outcomes. But for the current state, a lot of our products are pieced together components as needed. We piece together a collection of maybe two or three of the outcome data sources with two or three of the exposure data sources and do the analysis sort of in a standalone kind of way. But one of the exciting initiatives is to integrate the whole collection of exposures. So add delivery data sets and outcome measurements into one coherent system. And so that, that involves building up a framework that lets us plug new data sources in, pull other data sources out, plug in custom client specific data sources and uh, have the analysis operate without having to rebuild all of the linkages, plumbing, intermediate models and other things like that we need to do for custom integrations right now. So there's a lot of very interesting engineering and abstraction and architecture type work that we're, that we're developing to be able to have that integrated and flexible modeling and analysis system. When you think about the increase in, in, in projects that, that EDO is winning, the knock-on effect to not just your team in data science, but the broader technology team, 
Where do you see the team being from a headcount perspective in, in 12, 24 months from now? What sort of positions are you going to need to add to the group and what opportunities are there going to be for people to come and join EDO and, and do this sort of work? Yeah, we're, we're growing. We're doing steady growth. So not full explosive chaos type growth, but, uh, you know, looking to add to our current team of seven, another three to five people over the next six months, over the next year. Covering a variety of different areas, we've we've recently hired a a number of folks on the machine learning engineering side. So we have quite a few. We have a lot of capacity already in that backend engineering area. But particularly with analyzing new products, we have a lot of growth on the data analyst side. The folks who are really diving deep into specific questions, evaluating new data partners doing internal dashboards, internal monitoring. That's one of the areas that we have a lot of growth happening over the next six. And also along with that, as the team gets bigger, our organizational structure is very, is completely flat right now. I'm directly manage everyone on the team. We will have to be adding in a layer of managers and that brings along with it changes to the group dynamics, to the team dynamic. And it's a fun transition. It's, I've gone through it a few times before at, in previous roles, and it's very satisfying to see people, see the pods within the larger team develop, develop their own efficiencies, really blossom in a larger organizational structure. Final question from me then, Peter, given that you're continuously growing, as you mentioned, not that explosive growth, which can be quite challenging, but doing a steady and sustainable, adding the right types of people, but also that the work and demand is there. When you're speaking to candidates as part of the interview process, what is it that you tell them about the work, the mission, the environment, that EDO, that gets them excited enough to join you guys or some of the other great opportunities available? I think one of, one of the biggest things that we bring is a really nice size and a really nice scale, particularly for mid-stage career data scientists. We're a small enough team to where nobody's siloed. You get a variety of tasks to work on, a variety of responsibilities, lots of new opportunities to try out a new analysis, try out a new technology stack that you might not have worked with before. So that, that goes with it being a small company, you get that variety. But at the same time, we're a large enough organization to where you have real collaborators, you have support, you have people to bounce ideas off of, ask questions to. We have data engineers who can help prepare the data, get you past some of the grunt work that you might have to do as like a solo or a very small team data scientist at, a, at another company. So it strikes a very good balance between personal growth and exposure to uh, different problems and the ability to learn new skills, but also a large enough group where you've got support and you have mentorship and you have guidance. In terms of the other things that, that we look for in candidates and the things that I think get candidates excited about working at EDO are we're a company that has continuously changing needs. We're not a sort of legacy company that's really found an established area and is sticking to it. We're dynamic. We're doing a lot of new product development. And so what that means is that the, our needs are always changing. And so the work that people are doing is always changing. And so we look for people that like learning new things. They like trying out new things. They like variety in their day to day and in their month to month and their year to year workload. And for the right type of people, that's a lot of fun. If you want to be doing the same thing every day in and day out, maybe not the right environment. Um, but for, for people who like that, it can be a very, very exciting and dynamic environment to be in. And so we focus our hiring also at finding people who have demonstrated an ability to learn new technologies, learn on the fly. Enthusiasm and interest is very important. Finding people who will really thrive in that dynamic and changing environment. Peter, thank you so much for coming on today and talking to us. Great to learn about your own background. Amazing insight into the work you're doing at EDO and the use of, of AI and analytics. And obviously, given the success of the organization, there's continued growth. And based on the, the environment that you described, it sounds like it could be a really fun place to work for people within data, whether it's data engineering, data science, or analytics. So we wish you, the team, and everyone at EDO the best of luck in the months and years to come. And Look forward to having you back on the podcast again in the near future. Thank you for having me. Enjoy that conversation. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Aldous Podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review. 
We are available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and any Android podcast of choice. You can also head over to our website, www.allthis.com, to listen to more podcasts, view our open roles, and stay up to date with industry news. Thanks for listening and stay tuned for more great episodes coming very soon.